management of stress and how we can cope up with the you know the stressful situations we are bombarded with which are not which are much beyond our control not in our control but what is in our control is how we deal with it what is our reaction to it stresses to kabhi nahi khatam honge wo badhte hi jayenge and we don't know how when we will be facing so it is always important that we instead of yes avoiding the uh, stressor is a way to avoid stress the feeling stressed our duties to ourselves will be to strengthen the coping mechanism how we can cope so, so that we can just sail through all the life stressful situations so with that and uh, with a uh, with my best wishes for a coming new year i will just begin telling you something of my understanding so as i understand and as you all will also understand that health is successful adaptation to the environment it may it is so that we can eliminate all that stressful situations which uh, which cause turbulence in our in our uh, own body inside the internal environment successfully we can keep them at bay so let us go through some definitions which have been prevalent uh, all over and of during all the times shalav yahuda they uh, they describe stress as a very normal psychophysiological response to events which result in feeling of threat sadness dysphoria and overwhelm in people at this stage let me tell you that uh, man's first uh, reaction first emotion to develop was perception of threat because when man evolved he was only concerned with he was a hunter gatherer and concerned with face with predators and what he had to do is to run away from the predator as quickly as efficiently and as far away as possible that was the that was the aim so our predators have been changing over the time that is the only issue because technology has uh has developed in such a fast pace physiology has not been able to cope up with that so let us see other uh, other uh, definitions american psychiatric association describes stress, uh, stress as being overwhelmed being worried bombarded with destructive thoughts emotional exertion and can influence people in every age even toddlers sex race and situation resulting in physical and psychological health issues that is breakdown of our environment internal physiological environment way back in 1984 stress was an uh, was defined as an exclusive relation between the person and his surroundings which he finds taxing and while coping goes beyond much uh, threatens to break down uh, threatening the health of the person so we have a noxious stressor here which um, stressor will be termed as a stimulus if it does not do much harm just um, the individual physiological system is tempered with and comes back to normal when the stimulus or the stressor is removed if it continues psychological and physiological systems are also involved leading to three stages stage of alarm when the person body's physiology sets up oh yes something is happening resistance i can't let it happen i mean the other physiological systems come into play to resist that and when these break away we have a stage of exhaustion where you know our physiology becomes altered because it has to coordinate with many systems and when this coping mechanisms sorry 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 when this coping mechanisms are exhausted 
then an altered response is created with altered physiology and that is that sets the pace for disease and health uh, health so we have three terms here one is homeostasis homeostasis is a maintenance of maintenance of internal environment in a steady state so that our enzymatic functions uh, uh, can go on within an optimum pH, optimum temperature, and optimum fluid and electrolyte levels. Then we have stress. So when the stimulus goes away, body comes back to normal uh, steady level. But if it continues, then it pressurizes. The pressure builds up and uh, stress, you feel stress. Then allostasis. When you feel stressed, the coping mechanisms come into play. And when every time you are, you are faced with repeated stressful uh, condition or stressors, these coping mechanisms are off and on. So they go on accumulating. No body does not come back to its normal level. So these uh, stressful um, coping mechanisms, which re leave a residual effect, build up, they accumulate over the time and the person builds up an allostatic la load. So homeostasis is essential for survival. And failure is where failure occurs when the internal environment cannot match the external changes. Like when you feel cold, we shiver. So when to uh, produce heat, it can be adequate. If it is not adequate, it involves a behavioral change, like we will put up warm clothes. Even if that is not enough, we will go to put on the fire or the uh, room heater. Now, stress is that perceived threat. It is not an entity. It is. It depends, the degree of stress depends on the perception of the person, how he perceives the stressor. So it is a perceived threat that disturbs the equilibrium and the uh, responses will be psychological or physiological level. Uh, for this, the body has a sensor to sense the, um, sense the appearance of a stressor, presence of a stressor, a receptor, which we will, uh, which we will, lead to the uh, perception of the stress, there is an effector and a control center, and there are feedback systems. Stress can manifest as physiological changes, increase heart rate and hormones, or psych and or psychological responses of anxiety and alertness. A person is always tense. Then allostasis are the physiological or behavioral changes that maintain the stability in the face of this changing stressful situations, which are often persistent, acute, or chronic. So now, uh, now, let us uh, summarize what is stress. It's a disruption of physiological and psychological homeostasis by a stressor and consistent or persistent exposure to this stressor what the same or the or different stressors over time leads to activation of the coping mechanisms and they built up the allostatic load and there comes a time when these coping mechanisms break down they lead to overwhelm feeling alteration in the physiological parameters and also impairment of cognition, like uh, unfocused thoughts, incessant thinking, there is, uh, there is aberration of judgment, etc. Stress is we need stress. Without stress, we will not achieve anything. That is called eustress. We need a deadline to get some things done. We need uh, exams to so that we can study. So it is productive to a certain extent. It promotes well-being in the sense it makes us do look after our own self. 
it brings uh, it 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 strengthens the our coping mechanisms and it is very required without stress i don't think uh, we'll be just uh, not uh, be able to achieve or do anything all it requires is time management but when it goes beyond a certain certain limit or if you are, if the person's coping mechanisms are not robust it becomes disruptive thereby promotes disease which is not a very good thing to happen and it, all it requires is emotional management it can be acute chronic persistent acute on chronic this all this leads to general adaptation syndrome what is this is hensel was a founder of the stress theory he was a hungarian endocrinologist and he just divided stress into three stages stage 1 1 is when the alarm sets in the causing sympathetic arousal vasomotor tone is increased cortisol adrenaline is secreted and glucose is mobilized from glycogen sources stage 2 is resistance jaha pe pata chalta hai ki the stress is going to stay and so body has to built up the coping mechanisms and stage 3 is a stage of exhaustion therefore we can see stress has ability to uh, affect all systems together one by one or in a coordinate how can we say it is a generalized adaptation has broken down when there is two or more life circumstances present as a stressor for 6 months or longer when all biological as well as genetic factors may combine to produce these symptoms you can see here the person is stressed in the presence of stressor but when the stressor is gone he reverts to normal but if this sometimes when the coping mechanism is not enough he, in spite of the stressor being away the person lends up with anxiety because is not because of the stressor or the degree of the stressor it's because his coping mechanisms are not effective so stress behavior or the symptoms or signs initially are disbelief and denial fear shock aggression dep depression withdrawal procrastination which we do not recognize easily then comes a honeymoon stage where person thinks i can deal with it it's okay i can deal with it you can um we can have pain aches and a person is chronically tired without knowing why he is tired where is the pain what is the source of the pain there may be worsening of chronic health problems substance abuse if there is it is increased there may be sudden allergies rashes and eruptions and then there is no certain reason a person cannot pinpoint any reason why he is not feeling good then can be irregularities in the circadian rhythm bowel habits loss of appetite may be there or increased appetite may be there there may be craving there may be overeating there may be binge eating leading to a guilt feeling that itself may be a stressor and of course social media addiction is a very great stressor nowadays so the body has also has an inbuilt mechanism to deal with the stress first it is by activation of the hypothalamic pituitary axis which we all have an idea of like hypothalamus in the brain secretes corticotropin releasing factor which stimulates the pituitary and the pituitary goes on to secrete uh, cortisol and adrenaline from the adrenal gland i will just briefly touch upon this what does cortisol do to us it sends more blood to muscles the because the person has to run from the stress stressor stressor it increases blood glucose because he will need more energy in the sense uh, uh, by i mean more energy to run more food more nutrients will be provided in the form of glucose 
then blood pressure increases because he will need more thrust. It inhibits all the non-priority functions because of digestion and reproduction because those can be you know, dealt with later on. But uh, we have seen now, there are a lot of disruptors of this HPA excess. That leads to our uh, de-strengthening or weakening of the coping mechanisms. What are these? Toxins in the food, in the, uh, by the manner of this processed foods, inflammation and infection, stress, insulin resistance, which is very common, obesity is common, malnourishment, physical overactivity or underactivity, trauma, emotional, prolonged calorie restriction, allergens, sedentary lifestyle, consumption of refined sugar, excessive fat or even low fat or very salty stuff, and of course, insomnia or disordered sleep habits. Likewise, adrenaline also prepares the body to respond very quickly and effectively. Each, uh, they're all complementary to each other. It activates a sympathetic flight and flee response, increases heart rate, dilatation of airways. We need more air that time, mobilizes uh, just the energy store, become highly alert, and of course, inhibits non-essential functions like shuts down digestion and reproduction. And uh, the pupil also dilates. So this is the nutshell of the stress response. In response to the stressors, both these neural and endocrine hormonal pathways are secreted. Mediators then uh, go on to bind with receptors in the body, brain, and different physiological systems, causing energy mobilization, metabolic changes, immune system activation, and suppression of reproduction and digestion, which can be genomic as well as non-genomic. There is altered metabolism, uh, your even synaptic plasticity, that is your uh, nerve, neural structure, neural network, physically also alters, and that can be uh, also uh, transmitted from by, uh, through generations and generations, unless we develop, we, 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 call, we disrupt this kind of disruptive mechanism. Again, role of nervous system, if we look at it, we all know there are two limbs, sympathetic and parasympathetic, which are complementary to each other. And stress goes on to activate the sympathetic. Now, once the stressor is removed, parasympathetic takes over and the person more or less comes back into a relaxed state. Again, the uh, uh, effects are same like before. So that it is a, uh, it is a backup system actually. All these uh, long-term chronic effects of stress has an impact on health. What are they? They are increased risk of cardiovascular disease, hypertension, depression or anxiety, diabetes mellitus, substance use, which begins with a, as a coping mechanism, then inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome and cognitive impairment and dementia also. How? causing hormonal imbalance. If we are not uh, coping with stress, hormonal imbalance, immune su system suppression, inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, that is the uh, functioning of the blood vessels. Of course, gut-brain access, which is a very important factor, lesions in hip hippocampus, prefrontal cortex, impairing your thought processes, impairing your memory and judgment, sleep disruption, and also a genetic and epigenetic factors uh, affect. Coming to stress coping mechanism, they are adaptive and occurs as a result of presence of a stressor. So when this adapt, 
adaptation is not enough it brings into uh, uh, it uh, well, for, in one system it asks for help from other systems so it's a balancing act between many factors psychological biological social factors and it can be adaptive adaptive uh, coping mechanisms resolve the stress the body becomes healthy again next time on the stressor appears it is ready with all the mechanisms in place maladaptive is when it causes further problems like uh, substance abuse if a person is uh, using uh, any substance as a stress coping mechanisms the use of that increases and that causes further problems and active coping when a person goes on seeking other methods or uh, tries management uh, stress management techniques seeking a uh, resolution to the stress effects men externalize in the form of aggression and impulsive actions women internalize stress so women are more affected health wise that we have to agree and that is why women's health should be women should be more uh, more alert of these stress behaviors basically these are the causes of this uh, ill effects on the health chronic low grade inflammation autoimmunity and immune suppression apne body ka jo natural resisting mechanisms hai wo shut down ho jati hai after long prolonged uh, exposure to stress all this happens because jo energy mobilized ki gayi thi to fight the stress does not reach the logical conclusion pehle zamane mein logical conclusion was what running away from predators now we cannot run away from predators they are there in our life almost as a permanent fixture all we have to do is to strengthen the coping mechanisms they are all aimed at psychological adjustment stress aayega jayega so we have to uh, we have to set a pattern of let go we have to develop a spiritual outlook of acceptance we will we cannot deny the uh, presence of a stressor so better accept it with a non judgmental attitude be not materialistic why stress occurs because our demands don't meet our uh, our manifestations so let us not be materialistic promotion of well being that is by physical exercise um, ultimate aim is to make our stress coping mechanisms a robust one development of re uh, resilience and emotional intelligence that is emotional regulation an ethical moral lifestyle and of course very important self care by setting boundaries getting organized establishing a routine and of course slowing down because the first sign of a uh, stress is radio nst radio i mean the non stop thinking so we have to be aware of it we have to set boundaries this far no further stress is all right till this far my then get organized establish a routine so that nothing is you are not affected stress management techniques uh, are the, these uh, daily exercise mindfulness we have to be awareness aware of what is coming and what is hitting us muscle relaxation is the first thing is first thing that happens is the muscles become tense yoga again i said it's a whole package which gives everything visualization visualize a different you visualize and create an a uh, a uh, customized environment where you will not be disturbed and of course deep breathing and breath works so this i said and biofeedback is the real time monitoring of this your parameters physiological parameters guided imagery massages panchkarma in ayurveda mindfulness 
then uh, various therapies, psychotherapy, um, this uh, behavioral, cognitive behavioral therapy, acupuncture, aroma therapy, art therapy, hydrotherapy, music therapy, and of course, yoga nidra. So these are various stress management techniques. Now, how do these stress management techniques help? Relaxation technique activates body's relaxation response and it becomes a, a, it becomes a reflexive action in, in, in the face of the stressor. Like slowing down the heart rate, heart rate. Presence of a stressor, stressor will increase the heart rate, but continuous relaxation technique, your heart rate will not uh, increase. Mindfulness meditation. We have MBSR technique, focusing on cultivating awareness, accepting the moment without judgment. So you develop a non-reactive accepting attitude and management of your emotions. CBT again helps to identify negative change thought patterns and which is replaced with positive thought patterns. Physical exercise releases endorphins which are body's natural mood elevators and various other nurturing uh, hormones are also in uh, are also secreted and it is it's a distraction of stress from stress factors improves overall physical health and we develop a better stress response social support its use cannot be denied emotional assistance we get lot of support system we learn to see the stressful situation from different perspective. Feel a sense of connection that I am not alone. That is a big help. Buffer against negative effects of stress. And ultimately, we have the it's a coping strategy. Then time management, thought management is acquired by journaling. Keep a journal, read, uh, write down all every thought of yours give priority to the activities to regain a sense of control over your life this reduces feeling of overwhelm prioritizes and increase a person's ability to cope with stress biofeedback i have said humor and laughter is a big uh, is a big helpful uh, st uh, stress coping mechanism because again, endorphins release is triggered and it temporarily relieves pain and stress and traveling and reading. Traveling, I would advise always solo because it broadens insight, increases introspection and you learn to observe and contemplate. On the other hand, traveling in a group may also be a stressful situations for many so we see individual preferences individual ability to cope with stress individual preferences for stress coping mechanism different personality traits are more susceptible to stress like introvert people uh, perfectionist and obsessive people and they also we also might need a combination of strategies to meet, to cope with the stress. Now, I think um, we will measure all our stress level. Uh, are you game? I mean, can we do this? Yes, doctor. Uh, we'll, uh, this will be the most interesting part. Yes, let's do yeah. that. Burnout. Uh, uh, we are all working professionals, and burnout is the is the is the earliest and most serious manifestation of uh, stress, uh, failure of stress coping mechanism. I will not call it stress, but uh, failure of stress coping mechanisms. So we have divided into, this is the questionnaire we use in our this thing, exhaustion, mental distress, cognitive impairment, and emotional distress. So on this, in the exhaustion scale, we have three questions. Uh, you all can, uh, from, zero to five from never to always we can give us some number 
at the end of the day, how I find myself, you know, in the scale of one to five, how much? So we can all do it. So in the uh, cognitive uh, impairment, I have trouble staying focused. I have trouble concentrating. I have just I've given some examples here. Five, four, whatever your things, uh, how you score yourself, emotional impairment, and then total up everything. Total up everything and divide by 12. 10.8 to hone sakta. Because it will come from 1 to 2.53. Say what example I have given. The total has come to around 42 or 45, I think. 5, 12, 5, so 60. 12 so, questions and 5 number we can give. The maximum will be 12, 5, so 60, no? Mm -hmm. so maximum will be 60 marks. Yeah. So, it's good 12, say 12, say divide, divide, divide karna hai divide. So, if your score is then comes out to 1 to 2.53, then uh, it's okay. It, there is no, no, no likelihood of taking any stress management technique. If your score is 2.54 to 2.95, then you have to do something. You have to sit up. And if it's 2.96 to 5, then, well, you are a health uh, high-risk case. Yes. So exactly, like if it is one to two point five, it is you are still in green zone, very safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two point five four to two point five. You are in orange. You are yeah. moving towards red. That is, you are in the orange zone. Orange. And zone. then, if you are two point nine six to five, then of course you are in the red zone. Very red zone. Prone to fall to any of the stress-related ailments, or you have already fallen prey to any of the stress-related ailments. Actually, yes, yes, exactly, exactly.